Hey guys, and welcome to today's MCAT question of the day. As always, we'll be working through one of the many MCAT practice problems found at MCATSelfPrep.com, home of the free MCAT prep course. I'm Dalton, a 100th percentile MCAT tutor, and today I'll be walking you through this problem as though you're one of my private tutoring students. Today's practice problem comes from the end of lesson mastery quiz in lesson two of the Biochemistry 2 module. Be sure to hit pause and try this problem for yourself before watching my explanation. Now the electron transport chain is a big part of metabolism because all this work that we've been doing with the Krebs cycle or citric acid cycle with glycolysis to make NADH molecules or FADH2 molecules, the whole point of all of that was so that those molecules could carry electrons to this transport chain. And so we could use this transport chain and those electrons to get ATP. So here's how this goes down. Here's how it starts. We have NADH or FADH2, and you'll notice that these hydrogens obviously are bonded to the rest of the molecule with electrons. There's electrons in this bond, right? And so we drop off those electrons in that bond. That's why these are so important because they're electron carrying molecules. We drop off the electrons in that bond. And then because of that, we have H plus the proton and the rest of the molecule NAD plus that gets, get dropped off in the matrix inside. The electrons on the other hand that we're dropping off go into this complex. In the case of NADH, it's complex one. In the case of FADH2, it's complex two. But either way, after that, they're going to go through complex three and complex four with a few steps in between. And eventually those electrons are going to end up, with the help of these two protons and some oxygen, they're going to bring those together and they're going to end up in H2O. And that's why H2O is a byproduct of cellular respiration. Along the way, they're getting handed off from one metal ion to another. There's some iron sulfur molecules. There's some cytochromes that also have iron ions in them. And so they're getting handed off from one ion to another and just getting leapfrogged down through here. And that's creating current because as we know, movement of electrons is current, right? And with the power of that current, we're able to take protons that are in here in the matrix and we're able to pump them through into this intermembrane space. We're going to take random protons and pump them through that's going to create a concentration gradient, meaning it's going to get really crowded here in this intermembrane space. And eventually it gets so crowded that these protons are going to want to start coming through this ATP synthase. They're going to want to start coming through this special protein that works like a water wheel. Like if you picture it like an old mill sitting in the river and it's turning, this flow of protons that wants to come back in is going to turn that wheel, create energy, and that's how we get our ATP. All right, so we want to figure out which of these four different explanations is correct. Let's start with the first one here. Electrons move from NADH and FADH2 molecules through the complexes to eventually reduce O2 to H2O. Okay, this checks out so far. We know we're getting H2O at the end. This final reaction is exergonic, and the energy release fuels the pumping of H plus ions into the intermembrane space. Well, this is a tempting option. A lot of these are, actually. But the problem here is, look at this. It's talking about the energy released by this final reaction fueling the pumping, right? But remember, the energy is actually being fueled by these electrons and all these steps they're taking past these metal ions, right? This current that we're creating. It's not like it all gets all these protons get in this one step moved into the intermembrane space. They're getting moved in in all these different complexes as they're coming through. Lots of different complexes are helping to move these different protons in at different stages. So this first option is going to be incorrect. Let's skip this second one for now, come down to this third one, this is similar. NADH and FADH2 lose electrons. Okay, this checks out. But look here. It's telling us the hydrogen ions they give up are pumped directly into the intermembrane space in the mitochondria. That's tempting too, because we know there are hydrogen ions getting pumped, but it's not necessarily the hydrogen ion. It's not during the redox reaction that this happens. Does that make sense? It's not the hydrogen ion right off this NADH that gets pumped through as we're dropping off electrons. We have to generate some kind of a current first, and then protons or hydrogen ions are going to get pulled kind of at random from this intermembrane space. The, the pumping of this proton is not the same step. It doesn't come off this exact same molecule as we're getting this electrons off all at once during that one reaction. So this is going to be incorrect as well. Finally, this last one, it says NADH is oxidized directly by the complexes but FADH2 has to be converted to NADH first. Now, that's that's our problem right there, is because even though NADH and FADH2 do go to different complexes, we remember that, right? FADH2 goes to complex two, NADH goes to complex one. It's not like FADH2 gets turned into NADH before this whole thing can start. It doesn't need to do that because we have complex two. And so this is going to be incorrect as well. 
That means our final answer option, and the correct answer option as it turns out, is this one right here. High energy electrons from NADH or FADH2 are transferred in redox reactions and moved along different electron accepting metal ions to create a current that pumps hydrogen ions. That checks out. We talked about those different ions, right? That creates the current. That's what pumps the hydrogen ions. Let's test it. Awesome. Perfect. If you enjoyed this MCAT question of the day, be sure to give it a like. For more MCAT questions of the day, be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel and enroll in our free MCAT prep course found at mcatselfprep.com. Now, if you're really looking to maximize your MCAT score, be sure to check out our elite tutoring services and request a free consultation with any of our available tutors. We'd love to chat with you about your situation and how we can help you maximize your MCAT score. Have a great day. We look forward to hearing from you and we'll see you next time.